Let's jump over. Let's watch this dude. It's only eight hours. Welcome to a very long video. So what you're about to see right now is a re-release of the course that I've made back in 2007. Um, it, then I was using. Um, the reason I'm re-uploading this is for this whole account to be a reporting question. Of course, pose for the question. Part of the video. Look, we're already skipping ahead of the worthless parts. Also, go to the Discord and ask us question there. Also, I love that doggo. Something I would appreciate. So, um, if you guys enjoy this, or it's a one-time off by the way, but if you guys enjoy this, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us quite okay. a lot. Okay. And by all, I need me. <laughs> me, it might, I think. Hello and welcome to the very first lesson in which we will download Unity 2017. If you already have the engine installed, make sure that you are at least on version 2017.2 or beyond. That is because we are going to be using Tilemap, a new feature in this latest version. So in order to download this, you will head over to unity3d.com and click on Get Unity. Now if Okay, hold up. 2017 is very old. We have, we're using 2020, I believe. Why are you compiling scripts? Just give me the... What are you doing? If you want to make sure that you are on the same exact unity, being the only to have to up since we're not making any money. Yeah, because I have, the term, well, I have URP you here. You want to add on top of unity. Of course, you're going to fail in computer because blah, 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 blah. you're going to be given uh -huh, the Unity engine. project. If it is your very first time using Unity, I really suggest that you take the same exact layout as I do so you know where I click and you know where everything is based on what you'll see on the screen. Oh, no, no. Now, to do that, to achieve the same layout as I usually have, I'm going to go on the top right over here <laughs> right, huh? and click on the default button. And I like to use a tall layout. Something like this. Ooh. I just pull all the window like this so I have as much scene space as I can. And here you have the IR key, Inspector in Project. I'm going to right click on Project and make sure this is a one column layout. This is how I'll be working for the rest of this course. If, of course, you have a different okay. one column layout. Inspector in Project. I'm going to right click on Project and make one sure this is a one column layout. layout. Interesting. This is how I'll be working for the rest of this course. If, of course, you have a different layout and you've been using Unity in the past, use that. Use your own layout. It is going to be way more efficient for you. But if you never actually used the engine before, go ahead and copy this exact layout. This is going to help you see where I click. This is, of course, going to help you follow the course at a faster pace. Cool. Okay. So now let's do a quick recap of what these screen do. Scene view is your scene view. So everything you do, everything you put in your level is going to be seen here. And uh, this is actually where you make your whole level. Now, the IR key is a replica of scene view, but this one is really just focused on data. So instead of your scene at the moment, there is only one camera and you can see that camera is here as well. If you decide to move it, you can see the value at the top here, the, the position value, you can see it change. So these two are linked together, the scene view and the IR key. Now, whenever you select something, How do I just move like I'm the camera? this camera right now, you're going to have some extra information on it in the inspection. Hold on. How do I move the camera? Uh, my camera must be stuck, like fixed or something. I can change the width and height, but where is my like move camera, drag where camera is? Do I need to like hold control or shift? Uh, w. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, how do I get that off, Q? So W is, and Q are, enable and disable movement i guess of features right so it seems like oh no so i can also move these things oh, i can't move that Okay. 
hand tool that just moves around here. Okay, so W is move tool. Though how would I move like this box? Unless that box just exists in the game. No. No, it does not. Where did that conversation go? So this rotates. So if I do like that. Then I can start it off and I'll be looking like this. Okay, interesting. How do I just disable all the rotation? I guess just set this to zeros. So this is the plane, so I can make it a 2D. And this scale tool, okay. Rect tool. I don't know what that one does. Okay, and then again, this is moving that. Cool. Vector window. So when I select my camera, as you can see, we can tell that it has a transform, a camera, a flare layer, and also an audio listener. And this is all on a single object, which is the main camera. If we are to create a empty game object, you're going to see that it has nothing but a position in the world, and we can move it the same way we move the camera inside of the scene view. Now, to actually mess around with the transform, it'll okay. Um, create empty. How did he do for creating an object? All on a single object, which is the main camera. If we are to create a empty okay, game so it's empty, object, yeah. you're going to see that it has nothing but a position in the world and we can move it the same way we move the camera inside of the scene view. Gotcha. Now, to actually mess around with the transform a little bit, to mess around with the position, I am going to create a cube displayed right here in the scene view, and I'm going to press W. By pressing W, you're going to have the move gizmo, and you'll be able to move. Okay, so W is the move gizmo, and also the re... Yeah, it is the move. Okay, um, so let's say I go to world and I create a cube no oh is it right click now w that doesn't work right click always takes me back to the um to the hand tool I don't want real-time combat, so I'm not worrying about that, but I'm not sure if it does. Okay, so how do I move this without just having to use this? Is it because it's somehow stuck on this line? No. Is he v -frift? That's awesome. Whoa!
Oh, well, now I can move it. Moo. Zinky. Thank you, Lobo. Okay. Um, you are right. It's probably best if I go like this. And then we do... And... Unity. And... I guess I just block myself. Bloop. Unity has no autosave? What? Who doesn't have autosave in 2022? Are you kidding? Okay. Same exact way we have been moving it for a while. Is there an autosave plugin? You'll be able to rotate it, either on a single axis like this by clicking on the lines. Whoa! Hold up. Go back. Move it. Same exact way we have been moving it for a while. If you press on E, you'll be able to. Whoa! Either on a single axis like this by clicking on okay. the lines, or on multiple axes by clicking in the empty. Ooh. You can then press R to play around with the scale. Bloop. Bloop. Those are really basic controls and we are going to be using them as we make our level later. Now the final one, the final window I'd like you to have a look it at. It still is, the, the problem still is how hard to, to drag around. I still don't understand why I can't just drag this object. Oh, I have to literally click on that tiny little inside square for dragging, okay. Now the project window is the exact same replica as the asset folder in your explorer. Let me actually get a little bit deeper on that. If you right click inside of the project window, yeah. you can see there is a button called show in explorer. Okay. Let's open that up. Show in explorer. This is in my desktop and it is in the top dungeon, which is our project folder. Inside of it, there is a couple of things that you need to have Unity working. Wait, the why is mine all in the, the temp folder? Uh, everything of mine is in the temp. This seems bad. Hold on a second. Why is it saving everything to local temp? Save project. I mean, this is going well. I'm just very curious. Open project. See, look at that. What is this? Why would it ever save to the app data local temp? What? Also, I'm pretty sure I named this project Llama RPG, so. See users Alex, that's, that's where I want it. No clue what happened there. Oh, dang it, this is 2021, hold up. No, 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 no. Cancel. Close. Remove project. All right, new project. Where do I set it to be on the older version? Oh, here.
Hmm, this doesn't have URP though. Three D URP. Huh. Because the 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 RPG without code thing like that that we have only works in twenty twenty version. So let's see. Which, I mean, we don't have to use that. It does probably have some good basic systems, but again, I might just steal some of those systems over. All right, so I guess we'll use 2021. And we'll just make it here and we'll do this. Oh yeah, we gotta wait till it. For sure, bug. Failed to start and quit. I can't believe it would create a file in my local temp. That's where it would create the project. Hey man. Stealing is the sincerest form of flattery, right? Like that's just mean. You were just introduced to it. It's really fun. Okay. Are we almost there? <laughs> How are we looking? Okay, here we go. So here's our new scene. New project. So let me window capture to the new one. And we want layout. Oh, that's layers. Tall, one column. Move it over. Cool. And we need to go to C users. Uh, Llama RPG. Perfect. There is also some project settings, saving, you know, different things such as the project version, um, the input manager, all that kind of stuff that we need to have the game working. Some library, of course, to work with the code. And finally, the asset folder. And this is the one that is going to be the most important to us. Let's okay. open up the asset folder. As you can see, it is empty right now. Uh, not a not empty. File. So just a random text document. <laughs> As you can see, it's just a TXT document, nothing in it. Let's head back into the engine. You're going to see that it is now in our project as well kind of useless at the moment. No. But I just wanted you to know that the asset folder is the same as the project window as seen over here. Hey, so there it is. Thing and start creating a folder structure that we'll be using for the rest of the project. The first folder we'll be creating is one called artwork. And inside of artwork, I'll be creating a folder called animations and another folder called levels. Man, we already have 
a lot of things. We've got scene, settings, animation, 2D common path, pixel, sprite, sprite shape, tile map. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Visual Studio Editor. I wonder if I should make a make an artwork. Might as well copy what he's doing for now. We can always move it around later if we want. Uh, that's no. Why is it putting under assets? Whatever. Artwork. That's it for artwork. Let's go down and create another one for prefabs, another one for scenes, and another one for scripts. Those are all the folders God, we use. Moves so scripts. fast. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to try and keep this as small as possible, as simple as possible, so you guys can go back, uh, reread the files, figure out where they're connected, and also reuse them in the future if you'd like to create more content for the game. Prefabs, so, scenes, said, scripts. We're going to be ending this up by creating a new scene. Settings. That scene's going to be the main scene in which we're going to be doing a lot of testing at first and eventually turning that into some kind of hub. Whew. So what we're going to do is make sure you have a clean scene. At the moment, I only have a main camera. So this could be considered as a clean scene. Now, if you put more stuff in it, I encourage you to just hit Control and N on the keyboard, which is going to create a new scene. Make sure you don't save this one. Start again from scratch. This is a fresh new scene. And now you can click Control and S to save. I'll be calling this one main, and I'll be drag and dropping it inside of the scene folder. What we've done here is we created a new scene, and we saved that new scene. You could found have also a home oculus the after endless meth runs i know nice. how much you love a great head llama great co-op stream with moo girl and thanks for putting it on yt since i couldn't make it for sure thank you thanatos thank you lobo all right okay so we have our ui set up so control and not the UI, oh, it does uh, a little bit later on as well because we're going to need more window in the future such as the console that we'll see eventually which is here and also the style palette and probably more that I don't really have in mind at the moment but we'll be playing with the layout a little bit in the future make okay. sure that you find one that you're comfortable with and also make sure that your layout has at least the R key the inspector no. the project the scene view and also the game view hidden somewhere all right so that's it for this lesson I'll catch you in the next one where we'll find a texture atlas so we can build our old game around that texture atlas see you there welcome back everybody before we start and dive right into the engine and just get everything started, starting to this scene will be called levels, main. We're gonna need some kind of art. Now, I encourage you to go ahead and make your own art. But if you don't have any, if you don't know how to make art, if you don't um, have any knowledge in Photoshop or how to make sprites, I encourage you to go get this one right here. That's the one I will be using during this course. It is free and also royalty free, which means uh, you can download it for free. Of course, there is no cost. And then royalty free means you can use it inside of your commercial project. Yeah, new. This I'll probably upload some um, today. I really appreciate is someone from itch.io and he uploaded his own. Um, he called it 16. All right, so let's go get a tile set. All right, here. And where's that tile set? Uh-huh. Okay. Download. Show it folder. Nice team dungeon tile set. So this is what we'll be using. And um, in the end, this is what you see right here. It's only one texture. It is called a uh, texture atlas. So that's a 256 by 256 pixel picture. And in that, you're going to crop what you need. So that's exactly what we'll be doing inside of the game engine in a little bit. Now, if you'd like to use the same exact... Yeah, 2D top-down RPG. Okay, we'll start with uh, this right here. I'll come back for... 
other pieces later. Okay. Tile set as I'll be using for this course, then go check out the resources tab in your lesson and you'll be. Ton of cool tile sets on itch.io. Um, game assets, 2D, tile set, top down. That does look pretty cute. That also looks really nice. This is the one that I'm going to use right now. I feel like this has a decent look to it. <laughs> so I'm gonna use that one right here but yeah there's a lot of good ones if there's something that I come across later that I just fall in love with then we can always switch Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go See back. A link to this tile set. Make sure you download it, import it in your project. This is a simple PNG image. All right. So once you have the texture downloaded, I have it right here on my desktop. You're going to either drag and drop this right in your project, or you're going to put it inside of the asset folder because you know that this project over here is the same exact thing as the asset folder. So I'll be opening up the top dungeon. That's my project folder, and I'll be heading into assets, and I'll just drag and drop this in here. If we go back in the engine you'll see that it just appeared. Okay. Hold on, what? There's so many though. Full version available on itch.io. What do you mean full version available? Just give me the tile set. That's where I downloaded it. Oh, all right, that works. As long as I have a base, we're good for now. Okay, so there we have the Atlas. And you can go down and... Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so I do that and we can just drag it into, he just dragged it as its own thing. Wouldn't we want to put that under like something else? I don't know. Hey, so once inside of here, let's actually rename that to Atlas. That's gonna be our texture Atlas. This is how we call these Atlas, because it contains more than just one cool. object in here that we'll be using. So I'll be taking this and drag and dropping it into Holla the artwork back. folder. What up? Okay, oh, now work. let's have a look at what happens if we double click on it. Since you recognize it's a PNG image, it is going to open it up in your favorite photo viewer. So throughout this course, we're gonna be using most of the left side over here to create level. So imagine cool. we're going to be splitting those squares one by one and we'll be painting levels using those. We're also gonna be using the little red goo over here. Um, that's gonna be some kind of healing fountain. The enemies are gonna be at the bottom left. Your player sprites are gonna be at the bottom over here. 
and also the weapons. We'll need the weapons. We'll also be using one of these boss here, one of the three boss, and also doing a sprite animation with these torches. Ooh. And the chest. So basically, we're going to be using a lot of that when we create our level. We won't be using all of it, so in the end, if you want to make that texture even smaller, you'll be able to crop what you want and just put it in a smaller texture. But 256 by 256 is very, very small in the first place. So this is a really good, really optimized texture. And that is going to conclude it for the very first section. This one was super simple. We just installed Unity. We set up RUI so it looks the way we want. We're basically ready to work. And that's exactly what we'll be doing in the second section, guys. So join me there. We'll be talking about moving an object around, moving a sprite around. By the end of the second, or the other enemies. And also you're going to have the first thing we'll need to have a character moving is to actually have the character on the scene somewhere. So this is our texture right here. We're going to click on it. Make sure it is under sprite to the new eye. Now I'm looking at this in the inspector. So this texture we import, the PNG image, make sure it is under Sprite right, to the to NUI, the and then NUI. Hit apply if it wasn't already. Okay. Once that is completed, we are going to go under Sprite mode, and make sure this is on multiple. multiple. The only reason we are doing this is because this specific atlas right here, this specific image, has multiple sprites on it, so we need it to be on multiple. Fair point. If you cropped out your player, if you have a different texture and your player is cropped out into a single image, don't worry about putting it on multiple, you just need to have it in your project somewhere. In our case, our player is somewhere at the bottom here, so we still don't know which one we're going to be using, but this is a multiple spreadsheet. So go ahead and hit apply once more, okay. and we're going to then click on the sprite editor. This is going to open up this Ooh. last window, and in that window, we're going to manually crop out our player. So I'm going to pan around using the middle mouse button, and then zoom in again using the middle mouse, and I'm going to choose which player I like the most in that. So we could start with that little boy over here, that little disturbed boy. And I'm going to make sure that I zoom in very, very close and I click and hold to drag around. So as you can see, it's going to create that green, that green square and make sure you wrap the whole player around it, including the little outline over here. So once you have your first drag, make sure you resize it properly. In this case, I have something that is 15 by 16 and that would be our player right here. If you'd like to have something that is a little bit more clean and um, have a standardized size for every single sprites we're going to have, I really suggest you put that on 16 by 16 by extending this thing by one pixel. So when you look at the bottom over here, you're going to see the width is 16 pixel and the height is 16. Now you could of course have something else 16. that is 256 by 256 if you have um, more definition in your sprite, but in this case all the characters, all the little players you see here can be fit in a 16 by 16. Maybe cool. at the exception of this one, um, the knights, they're a little bit bigger. But if we want to use all the same size of the player, we can go here, and as you can tell, they all fit in a 16 by 16. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go back, make sure that this one is the one that I selected, and I'm going to go down here, really important you go down here and you rename this sprite. This is going to be player Name. underscore zero. Player Once zero. Once we have more sprites for the player, I'll call this one player underscore one, player underscore two, and so on. Nice. Actually. Let's do that right now. So we're going to, once this one is completed, one, once this one is clean, so 16 by 16, we're going to do another drag just by clicking anywhere else, and I'm going to select this little guy as well. This one is 16 by 15, so I'm missing one in height, so let's get that. And here we go. That would be player zero, and that would be player one. Player so I'm going to make sure I make this one as well. One. Okay, so at the moment, we have our two player sprites. They are not registered nice. just yet we have to click apply at the very top. And that will conclude all we need to do today with the sprite editor. Nice. If you close that up, you're going to see that your atlas now has this little arrow. If you click on it, you'll see player zero and player one. You can also have a preview of those sprites by clicking on this at the very bottom of the inspector. As you can tell, you see this is our 16 by 16 pixel. Wait, I don't see it, one. hold on. Player zero and player one. That's this little arrow. If you click on it, you'll see player zero and player one. You can also have a preview of those sprites by clicking on this at oh. the very bottom of the inspector. As you can tell, you see this is our 16 by 16 pixel player one and player zero. Yeah, I pressed to play. Okay, so last episode, what we've done is we created some player sprites using the atlas. They are right here. That's player zero and player one. I, I mean, all this so far has been really great. Like. I'm I'm very happy so far with with this. This is good learning stuff. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop player zero anywhere in the scene. As you can tell, it's fairly fairly small. 
and you can just drop it wherever you want. But if you want it to be centered, what you can do is just drag it inside of the R key. Remember that the R key is just a text and data representation of what's inside of the scene. So as you can tell here, we have our sprite. It is a little bit small. So while the atlas is selected, we are going to go up here in the inspector and change the filter mode to point. So no filter. And you'll end up with something like this. All right, so we fixed one problem. Now Wait, another pro hold up. What did he do? Well, the atlas is selected. You can tell here, we have third. What you can do is just drag it inside of the R key. Remember that the R key okay. is just a text and data representation. Oh, then he selects the atlas. The so as you can tell here, we have our sprite. It is a little bit small. So while the atlas is selected, we are going to go up here in the inspector and change the filter mode to point. So no filter. And you'll end up with something like ah. this. All right, so we fixed one problem. Now another problem Wait, is- why is my thingy still- To show you exactly how this apply. looks in there the we game, go. I am going to pull this game window and just make sure I anchor it on the left like this. So I just click an old and I put it here. You can also give yourself a proper size. Now what I like to do before I start developing any game is to choose for which type of resolution am I going to be building this. In this case, we're making a standalone game. Now for standalone games, modern game would go for something like 16 per 9, so 1920 by 1080. Yeah. That is way too big for us since we're using pixel art that is only 16 by 16. If we put I mean I should still go 16 by 9, right? I feel like every single game is is 16 by 9 even if I'm running on pixel art. Put that on a very very large screen in HD. You went 1280 by 720. I guess that would also work. Yeah, maybe 1280 is is best. This is not going to look good. So what we'll do instead is we'll make a game that feels like the old one, so something more retro. I will go under the game section over here, and instead of having the free aspect like we have right now, free aspects mean as long as you resize the window, it is going to match. We are going to choose our very own aspect. So here I have 800 by 600, which is a really common resolution for old games. Gotcha. In case you don't have it there, you can click on the plus sign and manually add it by typing in 800 by 600. Yeah, we'll go 16 All by right. 9. So now we have a fixed resolution. It looks somewhat like this, but it is still way too small. What we need to fix next is the camera. Yeah. We're going to click on the camera and then open up the camera component. And then we have to make sure that our projection is orthographic. This should be set by default if you decided to create a 2D project. Okay. If you made a 3D project, it should be on perspective, and it is going to be um, not really good for us. This is not going to be something we want. We don't want to have any perspective in our game. His camera looks very different than mine. Since we are flat. So let's put that back on orthographic. And then I'll put the size on 1. Having a size of 1 is going to make it so every 100 pixels you have is going to be equal to a meter. So technically, if you'd like to stack those player one on top of the other, you can duplicate this by clicking on Control c Control v and then changing the y-axis to 0 0.16. And it is going to stack perfectly on top of the other one. All right. All right, hold up. Copy, paste, 0 0.16. Hey, we got a second. Cool. Good to know. So we pretty much fixed what we had to do. The next step is going to be to start coding the movement of this player. Okay, so in this lesson, we are going to start coding. And if you've never coded before, I made sure that the class is really, really small in terms of scripting. But in case you've never coded before, make sure you actually follow, copy every line one by one, and leave some comments next to it. Thank you, Sal Savishukulus. What you'll have to pick up if you've never coded before is just Appreciate how to read the, the code and in which order, which we'll go over really quickly once we start coding. Okay. So let's click on our player over here, and let's add a component. Now, this is where you would choose what kind of component you want to add. Unity has a bunch, such as the Box Collider 2D, which we'll name in the future, but we'll want to create our own. So I'll type in player, and there is a couple over here. I don't want any of those. Player is going to be my own custom script. So let's go under New Script, press okay. Enter once more. We're going to be coding in C Sharp, of course. And then you should see that a new script has appeared. It is right here in your project folder, and it is also on top of the uh, y'all see where that player script went? Like, oh, there it is. Okay. Player. 
if for some odd reason it is not on top of your player, make sure you drag and drop. Okay, is it on top of my player? How do I know? Of this right here. And if you have two of those, you don't want that to happen either, so right click on one and remove component. Okay, player. Oh, here we go. Player script. Got it. And this is just kind of in its own spot. All right, so if we're ready, we're going to double click on player either here or down there. This is going to open up your default script editor. If you've never coded before and you just started using Unity, this is going to be model developed for you. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio 2017. And either one you're using is going to look something like that with maybe different color in the background um, and you know just different interface. But what we're really looking for is the code. So I mentioned earlier that I'm going to show you how to read the code and in which order to read it. So if you've never seen a script before, you might have a little bit more ease doing so once we're done with that explanation. But uh -huh. I also don't want to bore the more advanced user. So what I'll do is I'll create the script, I'll make the player move, and then at the end of this lesson, I'm going to go over how to read the code. So if you already know how to do that, you can skip then. Perfect. Until then, we are going to be creating that script. So for this player to have manual collision detection, we're going to need some more information from the outside. And that outside I know is Java, going to be so. the box collider. So we're going to need a box collider. I'll start by declaring a private box collider 2D that I'll just call box collider. Now notice that this one is private, so I can't drag and drop it in the inspector. I have to manually get it in my code, and I'll do that in a private void stop. So instead of the start statement, I'll say box collider is going to be equal to get component box collider 2D, mm -hmm. which means if we are going to have the statement run, we're going to need a box collider to be on our player, like 800% sure. If we don't have that, our script is eventually going to crash because we'll be using the box collider. What we can do is head at the top here and do a require component type of box collider 2D. This is something that could work for you. I really don't like it so much. I'd rather have the error mm. um, because this, what happens when you put this is that you're going to manually create one on your player. As you can tell right now, it hasn't compiled just yet. Let me just delete that drag and drop here. As you can see, it put a box slider 2D manually there. But I also like to resize my thing uh, most of the time, so I don't really like having the require statement. I'll go ahead and I'll remove it. Interesting. And if we do end up forgetting to put our box slider 2D, well, we'll have a no reference on that and we'll know exactly what's wrong. That being said, if you do not have a box slider 2D on your object just yet, now is the perfect time to get one by clicking on add component, box slider 2D, and make sure it is the size you want it to be. So in our Okay, so we need to go to our player zero, right here, add component, box, collider, 2D, and okay, I'm guessing it just is, yeah. Edit Collider. How am I editing it though? Hold Alt after clicking to pin center place. Hold Shift to handle the scale. Ah. Okay. So I'll scale it. our case, we might want to click on the edit collider and just make this a little bit smaller on this end. Really depends, you could also go for something even smaller than that. Say the error is not going to count in the collision, so something like this could also work. And hmm. let's get rid of the fit as well. <laughs> so this hitbox is really going to be for the player to move around and also when he received hits. Alright, so once that is completed, I'm going to lay down a private void. I would do an update, but since we're using physics and we're using the manual collision detection, we're going to have to do fix update. And this is going to update every time. Actually, fix update is going to follow the same frame um, as the physics. So this is really important we are on fix update in this very specific case. If you're looking for inputs, I usually don't like doing fix update because sometimes it might skip one. It's really, really rare, but sometimes it might skip mm -hmm. some inputs. But in that case, we really oh, for don't sure, have a choice cheap. since we're using... Uh, manual collision detection. We'll also have our own formula that uses physics. Okay, all right, so what I like to do in a movement update loop like this is to make sure I have one vector that is going to keep track of the delta. 
Uh, full time solution architect. Oh, nice. Uh, I really find a person like this. I'd love to have you a part of this. <laughs> Movement. Of course not, no. Right. So I'll go at the top here. I'll declare a private vector 3, and that's going to be a move delta. Move delta means in between this frame that I'm rendering right now and the next one, what is going to be the difference in between my position and where I'm going to be? Okay. So by the end of this frame, we're going to be adding our player's position, our player's current position, with the move Got delta, it. and we'll end up where we want to be. This sounds a little bit weird like that. This Definitely, like Zeta. Complicated, but we're going to make sure it is. I'm going to need a lot of art. Like, intro screen, end screen, pictures in between, NPCs, all sorts of crap, I'm sure. It's not so much. At the very beginning of our movement loop, I'm going to make sure I reset the move delta. This is in case, well actually, this is so um, on the new frame, so the frame after the one I just explained, we are going to just go back to zero. We might not have any input anymore. So we can say move delta is equal to vector dot zero. So we start off fresh at the beginning. Then we're going to look for the inputs on the keyboard and add them up to the move delta. To do this, I'll declare a float x. That's going to be my mm -hmm. delta in x. And we'll get that from input get raw axis or get axis raw with horizontal. So make sure this is a string. Thank call you. That horizontal. If you send me a message on Discord, I'll get you in the um, in the little alarm RPG channel. Get axis raw is going to return you minus one or one no. or zero. Llama, so it's going to return looking you forward to your game. Holding Less a than three. Or the left arrow key. It's going Thank to return you. you zero if you're not holding any keys, and it's going to return you one if you're holding D or the right arrow keys. The reason I know which key I need to press to receive those results is because they are set in the input manager and we can find it under file, or sorry, edit, project settings, and input. If you go in. File. Wait, where's project settings? The inspector, or sorry, edit, project settings, and oh. input. If you go in the inspector now, check the axis out. And if you click on it, you're going to see that the negative button is left. So that stands for the left arrow. All right, where's input? Mm, input manager. Oh, OK. Negative button left, positive button right. Alt negative A, D, gravity. Oh, that's cool. coming ah, so this is where we set all the controls for everything nice okay and the alternate negative button is a positive is right and Alt positive is D. So you have your WASD set up in horizontal and vertical. And you also have the arrow key set up as well. So we're using horizontal and vertical for those reasons. Now let's do the exact same thing with Y. So we're looking at get axis raw. This time we're going to be using vertical. And we now have our input left and right. Again, I'm going very slowly this time just so we can actually give some help. This is slowly. Room for the new people that are trying to understand. But let's do a small debug.log. I'm telling you, this is not going to be as slow in the future. But just to make sure we can understand what's going on here, let's do a debug.log with X. Aw, thanks, just Marcus. It, we'll see how we'll it goes. Debug.log with Y. Back in the game, if we go under Window, we pull out the console. I'm going to anchor the console down here since we have plenty okay. of space now that we have a 800 by 600. You're going to see that every frame we have 0, 0 in this case. And if we hold A, you're going to be seeing. OK, hold up. Go back. Back in the game, if we go under Window, we pull out the console. I'm going to anchor the console down here since we have plenty of space now that we have a 800 by 600. Window? Okay. You're going to see that every frame, we have 0, 0 in this case. And if we hold A, you're going to be seeing minus hold up. 1. I don't think I have console under Window. Do I? Back in the game, if we go under Window, we yeah, they definitely changed. <laughs> changed stuff since 2017. 
I mean, I'm, I just have whatever's on the um, generic. So like input manager. I'm guessing this is just the new input system package instead of this. Do I need to go download the new input system package? Okay. Uh, Uh, Unity new input system package. Where do I download it? Uh, window package manager. But where is it? Project. Oh, uh, do I need to? Search for it in the Unity editor. Yeah, but then the cost was going to be high. <laughs> OK. Package manager. Oh, what? Mm -mm -mm. We'll see, Crash. We'll see. All right, where am I finding this? Add, add package by name. Uh, what was it called? Oh, Unity Registry. 2D, 2D Sprite, Tile Map. And it is called. Do I need to install? Oh, that is installed. Okay. Input system. Install. <laughs> right, S. John.
project is using the new input, but the native platform backends for the new input system are not enabled in the player settings. That means that no input from native devices will come through. Do you want to enable the backends? Doing so will restart the editor and will disable the old Unity Engine input APIs. That sounds good to me. Uh, yes. Yeah, it'll just take some time to get used to the editor. All right. Of course you can. First first thoughts. <laughs> what a cutie. It does, it is slightly disturbing <laughs> somehow. <laughs> the protagonist. I mean. It doesn't have a soul soul yet. Um, no. Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama birthday. He looks a little too eager. Now this is a little standing walking llama. The other thought is maybe we do something more like this. So then he's more like a llama that'll walk around on all fours. This llama, this llama scares me some. <laughs> But this llama, you can put a sword and shield in his hand. I mean, I'm also not opposed to just having mul multiple llamas. This can be one of them. The standing humanoid llama. Yeah, give this one a knife and a little grin and he'll be freaky. This one needs a little bit longer snout stuff, but Ooh, Mr. Llama, nice.
Uh, I don't think they went through. Mender's game with the six months. Mm -hmm. Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama Thank birthday, you, Mr. Llama birthday, Mr. Llama birthday. He looks a little too eager. Um, where's the pictures of the whatever? We'll just save it there for now. Yeah, I heard there was a big band wave yesterday. Sorry, map hackers and botters that got banned. I mean, not really sorry, but you know, sorry. Um, okay. Why is this like unfiltered again? Um, where was that? I guess it doesn't look too bad. We might no. just be really zoomed in on it. Yeah, it's actually good. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate that, Ryan. I Windows 11, I built a new computer and Windows 11 is, is kind of, I don't know where it went. Uh, okay, so that's good. And then we get rid of that. And let's drop, actually cancel, save that. Okay, so let me drag this over here. This over here. That goes there and Control Shift C. That opens console. Okay. Pull out the console. I'm going to anchor the console down here since we have plenty of space now that we have a 800 by 600. You're going to see that every frame we have zero zero in this case. And if we hold A, you're going to be seeing minus one. If we hold D, you're going to be seeing one. If we hold by 600, you're going to see that every frame we have zero zero in this case. And if we hold A, you're going to be seeing minus one. If we hold D, you're going to be seeing one. If we hold A and W, you're going to be seeing minus one. And oh, wait. Hold up. He did something where the script is... As slow in the future. But just to make sure we can understand what's going on here, let's do a debug.log with X. And just okay. if we need it, we'll do a debug.log with Y. Back in the game, if we go under Window, we pull out the console. I'm going to anchor the console down here since we have plenty of space now that we have a 800 by 600. Um, the reference script on this behavior game object player zero is missing. The reference script player on this behavior is missing. Okay. Uh, so let's see. The reference script on this behavior. Game object player zero is missing. <laughs> player. Um, don't you like? Yeah, okay, player FX update. All right, I didn't like that. The reference script player on this behavior why does it just say this behavior does it not like this input get access raw is that kind of the issue that it's not liking 
Good call, Deoxin. I thought I removed that script. Remove component. Okay. So now add, because a script class cannot be found. Class player can't be found? What? So I want the same script like that. Okay. Player zero. Player, ah, no, now it hates us. You're trying to read input using the engine input class, but player.fixed update. We have switched input handling to input system package and player settings. Son of a gun. This is the problem with learning from 2017. Software and game development, is that a category? Go to player settings. And set the thing that it says. No, it says you have switched it. Which, because I did do that. the input manager will not be used. Okay, so I'm just not using the input manager. So I guess then I have to figure out, uh, as I've learned also fine, I build game, this is also last year. So it's using updated unit infrastructure. It might be best to switch over to the new project that uses the updated infrastructure. Oh, also, why am I capturing that? This needs to be. There we go. Didn't realize I was capturing that. Yeah. Because, yeah, if we're going to be using this new stuff. What is. I All right. I mean, I did like how this guy was going through it, but it's 2017, so five years ago. Yeah, I'm supposed to use input system, but I don't I don't know what input systems uh just any anything is. 
What's up, YouTube? Can you believe this guy? Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. First thing that we have over here is the hierarchy tab. Yeah, yeah, player. I click, I created an empty game object, which is a default one. You will only see transform. But later on in the game, we will see sprites, which are representing 2D game objects, which are basically image renderers. So sprites are, or sprite yeah, renderers, are image renderers. So if, we, if you have a character. What's with this guy's YouTube voice? Like, oh my gosh. Relax. My goodness. That sprite render will render it, basically draw it on screen. I would hope for it is. You simply type sprite, and here it is, sprite renderer. And so on, and so you simply come to the sprite I the red split. I Here you will see, you will just also a different position. So when I click the game object player, you will see the inspector panel or tab on my right side. Here you will see every component that is attached on that uh, game object. Since I have created an empty game object, which is a default one, you will only see transform. But later on, in the basically image renderers. So sprites are, or sprite renderer are image renderers. So if, we, if you have a character, that sprite render will render it, basically draw it on screen, same as from the image. You will also see rigid bodies, which simulate physics. You will see colliders, which helps us collide. Nope. We gotta go back to normal. Help two game objects collide with each other. You will see audio components, which if you want a sprite component, here it is. You simply type sprite, mm -hmm. and here it is, sprite. Of course, and atmosphere. And so on, and so forth. So all of the information about the game object and its component. Right, that's right. I was going to go change this to moo. moo. Game development. That works. Thank you, Atmosphere! Okay. You will see in the inspector panel. And you will also see scripts that are attached on the game object because Prod app will show you all the folders and files you have in your game. Currently, by default, we have this scene folder. How are you not in that channel already, Wraith? What? Where's my Discord at? Can't believe you would send me a five-year-old folder. Uh, llamas of the round. Um, all right. Uh, and Who has access to LUM RPG channel? Streamer, admin, oh, got it. There you go, Wraith. Okay. Hello? Well met at MR Llama Starcraft in chat. Happy I Wednesday, my dudes correct. and dudettes. Much love as per usual. Also, when next Diablo Immortal stream? Message me on Discord. Uh, never? Thanks, Adrian. Happy Wednesday. 
there, but we can right click, we can create and they pay a new me. folder over here and I can name it, for example, scripts folder. I can name it prefabs. Prefabs are saved game objects. We will come to okay. that, don't worry about that. We can save audio files, yes. fonts, UI images, and all of the good stuff. Everything will be available here it won't in be the project bit, tab. But... Now, one thing about the project tab is remember to keep it organized. You will, saw me create a folder for scripts. Same way you will see me create a folder for my images, for my sounds, for my fonts, for my prefabs, for everything. Doing is this right here is basically the game in Unity Editor. That means every game object I put inside, I will see it in the scene tab. For example, okay. here is the player game object and I can click here on the player game object and in the inspector panel, I can click on this cube over here and I can give him an icon. And there you go. So now he has an icon and this is what? in the scene tab is where you are going to position your game objects, your UI elements, and so on and so forth. So for example, if your game or our game is going to be within this bounds or these bounds that you see over here, so this rectangle. Uh-huh. Downloads. Uh-huh. Okay. And then I come up here. Other assets. Where's the apply button? <laughs> Just you, Warren. Just you. I guess because I've already selected an image for it. It's my guess. Since this is going to be, I'll remove that script and additional sprite render sprite. So I guess if we turn that off, but again, why would that not have any? any image there in this son and two we'll click here on the player game object and in the inspector panel i can click on this cube over here and i can give him an icon how did he get an icon panel, I and i not on this cube <laughs> over here and i can give him an icon and there you go so now he has an icon and this is in the scene tab is where you are going to Position your game objects, your UI elements, and so oh, on and so forth. you just so had to zoom example, out. For example, if your game or our game is going to be within this bounds or these bounds that you see over here, so this rectangle, which represent the camera, by the way, then if I want to position a game object here, I'm simply going to move it in the scene tab, and this is where he is going to be located. So the scene tab is for that. Rearranging game objects within your game. Now the game tab over here is how your game is going to be displayed on an actual device, be that computer device, desktop device, laptop device, mobile device, and so on and so forth. So all devices that you can imagine. Inside of this, so this game tab, you icon. can do one important okay. thing. Over here, you will see this free aspect. Here you can add a desired resolution for your game. So when I click here, full HD, and for some reason I have it fill HD, it is going to change the scene over here, how we see it, as you can see, and as well over here, the shape of the camera. 
Now, what do I mean that, by that? Well, if I go back over here in full HD or fill HD, I'm going to click on the plus sign to add my own resolution. And over here, I'm going to say full HD portrait and I'm going to say 1080 by 1920, which is the portrait mode. You will see now that we are in the portrait or we Ew. see the game in portrait. Same over here, we go back in the scene, we see the camera in portrait mode. There you go. So this is how you basically develop games for portrait mobile devices mode. in portrait or landscape mode. I can go back over here and select the full HD 1920 by 1080, so vice versa, and now I see it in portrait mode. Portrait. So this is how that is done. But of course, this doesn't mean if you set here the resolution to full HD and design your game for mobile devices, and this is referring to mobile devices mostly, this doesn't mean that your game will look the same on every device. We'll talk about that later on, and I've talked about that on my YouTube channel. You can check out the videos for that. But this is just mobile, to show maybe. you for what is the game tab. Now, the resolutions over here that you see will depend nice on risk. from file and then build settings from the platform your game is selected for. So currently it's for PC, Mac and Linux standalone. If you want for Android, you're going to click on Android over here and click on switch platform. It is going to take a few moments depending on also how large your project is. So if you have, <laughs> you know, a lot of assets and game objects, you progressed a lot in your project and for some reason you need to switch platform. This happens when you develop for Android and iOS as well. Gross. Then you will wait a moment or two for all of this to compile and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So that's <laughs> basically it. There is no way to speed it up except... Oh, I do need to share something with you, Evo. You. Okay. Anyways, back to it. Step for you to have us, you know, a good, good to learn. learn. So now, yeah, I'm on the 2021.3. I have more, more options for these resolutions, and of course, you can do the same thing I did. You can click on moving. They will be okay. displayed here in so you will see any errors that your project has will cool. bug that lot and yeah you will mostly use it as i said for debugging now this console tab is pretty good but there are also they have monetization plugins asset store, which give you more information but i will talk about that later on i also talk about that on my youtube channel this is for your own development to speed up your development process but you know as time goes that will come so don't worry about that currently we don't see anything later on i will show you which effort your purchase from the package manager basically the asset store before unity version 2020 was a tab where you import the assets that you get on the asset store either paid or free assets but now that is moved to window and uh i'm not sure so llama rpg is going to be semi multiplayer it's not going to be multiplayer in that you're moving around and everybody's on the screen moving and doing stuff and it's all like that, I don't believe. But it will be multiplayer in that you'll be able to like click on an arena and fight each other. Turn-based combat and such. So I'm probably going to need help with when it gets to that part and what I need to do with all that then package manager so here is the new asset store so any new Got asset it. we can close this tab and then you any new asset that you purchase they will be available here when you click on the packages and here my assets they will be available from this tab so you can see these are all the assets that I purchased and got for free on the unity asset store 
and a lot of these are really amazing assets that you know help you develop your games faster and so on and so forth as you can see <laughs> over here i have Thanks, 20, i have 126 currently and i will have more because they really help you develop your games faster next over here we nice. have the animation tab or actually the animator but the animation over here is where we create animations in our example project that will come a few videos from this one we will see how we can create simple animations don't worry about that but later on when we start creating real world games we will see how we can you know create more complex animations use them in our code and all of the good stuff now this is where we create the animations and display them and also set the frame rate and the other stuff related to animations and over here into the animator tab is where we connect those animations together and later on don't worry about that we will see that so we will have one animation here another animation here we will create connections for example we go from this animation to this mm. and from this animation to this and so on and so forth Thanks, we will kid. see how we can create parameters from this tab over here the parameter tab to help us navigate from this animation and from this animation and vice versa so we will see all of that don't Perfect. worry about that so these are the basic most shut up Evo. tabs <laughs> when you develop your games of course other tabs a year or two before i'm comfortable no way i'll be comfortable with these tools in about a week and uh LOM RPG will be ready in about a month. ...are located under window, and then you have over here. So you have under generally... You have the, the basic demo. Have, ...you know, scene, game, inspector, project, console, services, when we later on want to implement ads in our game or in-app purchase. Yeah. for lights in our game. There you go, there's or, the monetization. You know, lighting and animations here here are the animation tabs the animator and the animation that we saw audio is you know for audio mixer analysis for the plot we're going to mars in two weeks profile and analyze our game debug it and so on and so forth but that will all come later on in your development what is important now to you know learn which we did about these basic tabs that are used all the time so this is or you know just memorize these you can go through the video again to know these basic tabs and from there on when you get used to you know using unity other tabs will come and we will then mention them on the go let's get into the juicy stuff over here i have give a me the juice character. and if i double click it this is what you see and this is a nice little <laughs> one i i don't know fluffy thing which is a character from my game called gravity control and this right here is called a sprite sheet why well because we have multiple multiple characters basically multiple images inside of one image and this will form a blink animation inside of the game which yeah. you will see in a moment but on its own this is the character and you can either import him like this or yes. you can import him like a sprite sheet why do i import him as a sprite sheet well because this is more efficient memory wise and performance wise because you have hmm. all of the characters inside of one image and then you import them in your game and you slice oh, them nice up. that means choppa 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 so let's see how that works if you have any networking knowledge or something i may need it later things first over here in the assets remember by the organization I'm going to right click and create a new folder and I'm going to call it sprites folder of course further on in the assets you can sub categorize so over here you are going to right click and you're going to create a folder for characters or UI elements or enemies or so on and so forth you get the point and inside of here is where I am going to import my character. How does that work? Simply, you know, drag it with your left mouse click. You see the plus sign or the plus button, and now you release the mouse, and there you go. This is your character. And voila, here is our character inside of the game. Now I can, as I said, I can simply drag him like this inside of the scene. Remember, the scene is where you form your game. Or you Unity is free until your game makes 100K. Yeah, so let's say in some crazy world, I make this and then I I release the game and then the game makes 100K. Do I have to retroactively go back and then pay Unity after that? I mean, this game isn't going to make 100K, you guys. But 
No, it's just if you then made another game, you would then, okay. Or just anything you develop after it. We've made a variety of multiplayer games. First thing suggest is building it on Steam and using their network layer for, mo for most of the networking. I'm gonna put this to Steam. So build it in Unity, release on Steam, and use their network layer. I, I will definitely ask for your help there. Oh, okay. The money after 100K, you have to give a percentage or something. What percent do they take? You arrange elements and characters and all of the good stuff. So I can put him over here and that's it. I can go here in the game tab and remember game tab shows you how your game looks like. And if I were to hit the play button over here and the middle or the, you know, top middle, not corner, but top middle, this is what we have in our game. Of course, this is not something Got that you it. want to have in your game, except if you're creating some weird game. So I can, you know, right click on the character game object in the hierarchy and I can click here, delete, or it I can command okay. delete or delete win button on Windows. Now, one thing I'm going to explain before we go, notice over here, we have a sprite render component attached <laughs> on both. that game object. <laughs> In order for Unity to render this image, we need the sprite render component. And over here, we provide the sprite that we want to render, which in this case is this character. So this is one component that I talked about, and this is how it works. So I'm going to delete it now, and I'm going to click it because you're probably wondering, okay, teacher, you are crazy. I'm not going to use this in my game. And I know I am crazy, <laughs> and I know you're not going to use it in your game like this. You want to use every different element of this sprite in your game. How can you do that? When you are in the sprites folder, you are going to select your character. From there, when you select it, over here in the inspector, you will see the properties of that sprite. And you will see something called sprite mode, which is currently set at single. What you can do is you can click on that drop down list and change it to multiple and then hit this apply button over here at the bottom right corner for the inspector of your right. sprite when you click apply okay we did this part already it applies Dude, you can do it how do you know crash equity sprite here that with these sprites would click support don't worry about it you know the set i mean are sliced and if i click on each and one of those you can rename it over here so you so not in case that here job at its object and to see where you're going to position them so that you position them correctly there you you need as the, see when i go in the game tab we have a single character as opposed to having all of those characters at once in our game same as we had you know a moment ago so this is how we can patreon to donate so i can be an npc in the game I'll probably at some point have some Kickstarter thing like that where you can you can be an NPC, something fun. And separate individual sprites from a sprite sheet and use them. In Though I honestly need to then look at the logistics of even that, because let's say people donate to the game. I guess if I'm using that money to then pay people for developing and stuff, then that money, I would not, you know, that would just like go straight in and out. So there'd be business expense, but any money I paid myself from that, I would then have to tax. So I guess it would just get taxed no matter what for any of that stuff in our game. Of course, if this is a game we are creating, not an example that we are currently Under 100K free, if your company's revenue or funding is less than 200K in the last 12 months, you're eligible to use Unity Plus. $399 per user. That doesn't say that I have to pay over 100K in revenue though, right? Going through, we will add a rigid body. We will add- 213, Jesus. <laughs> All of those components don't worry about that that will come and that will form a game object or that will form your character in i just have to upgrade gotcha game. one thing that i want to point out before we continue is that you can yeah Eva, you can't charge a million sorry buddy i can pay you ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars <laughs> that's all i can pay you buddy 
have all of these images separated. So this can be image on its own. <laughs> image on its own. I got I, my hands are tied. <laughs> Eight. So we have eight <laughs> images over here. You can import them as eight different images. But as I said, when you put them here in the sprite <laughs> sheet, that is more efficient when it comes to memory in your game, when it comes to performance. Llama and RPG. So it's maybe a, a different name, like but this. but I'm just going to you know I had to say this just so that you don't think that this is the only way to import images inside of Unity. And then you would also create animations by dragging all those images, and we will see that in a moment. But first, before we do that, I want to show a couple of components that we have that I briefly mentioned, such as a rigid body. So in our game, we will want to simulate physics. And physics, I don't have to explain it. It gives you know physics to our game objects. It applies gravity to it, forces can affect it. You can interact with it. It has, there's a lot to the whole vision of it, but the general piece I'll give you is it has the, uh, Beauty of Diablo 2's itemization, but pre OP rune words, and maybe pre uniques. Not like pre uniques, uniques still existed, but more when rares were kind of existed. Um, so it plays into that, and hopefully, the grind of that. It hopefully will later grab some fun endgame from like Media and Excel. It'll take some of Neopets adventure uh, style and some of the fun just components that that has. And then maybe like Pokemon story look, you know, top down, that kind of move around, you know. Yeah, more emphasis on rares. But it will be an RPG, not an ARPG. And then it has a small piece of Diablo Immortal, just all of the monetization in it, which is everybody's favorite part. So. To win, <laughs> Join my army of the dead. You had me at one mil woo. <laughs> Sorry, one mil's off the table. <laughs> And okay, to do that, we gotta get focused. Said, you simply go hey, here, select thank the you. Main object inside of the hierarchy panel, because if you remember, when we introduce the hierarchy panel, it represents all the game objects in your game. When you select the game object that is in the hierarchy here in the well, you need to panel, pay for audio for all sure. The and properties that are attached to it. Currently, we only have the transform, which is the default one. We saw that, and now we have the sprite render, and we already explained that. So next, you're going to click here on add component, and here in here in this little search bar, you can filter for rigid body. But you can also do this. You can go over here, and you can filter for these Try and fill options on. that you have. So over here, we have physics 2D. You can click on that, and here you see all of the Pay to resurrect have, character. You are going to type here in the search bar because it's a lot faster. So simply you're going to type rigid body. Now, one thing that I want to point out that is you will see over here and well, it went away since I took my annotation. Anyways, you will see here we have a rigid body and rigid body 2D. Rigid body. That Rigid Body 2D is self-explanatory, but Rigid Body is for 3D. I don't know why they didn't put Rigid Body 3D and Rigid Body 2D, but anyways, 2D is for 2D games, 3D is for 3D games. So if you're creating a 2D game, but don't confuse my dude just dropped. Rigid Body. What happened to him? On your game object. 
So I'm going to select Rigid Body 2D, and that's all there is to it. Over here, you will see on the Rigid Body, we have a... What was that? We have the body type, which is dynamic, kinematic, and static. I will talk about that in a moment. He keeps we dropping! Also have over here, for the mass, should we oh, set yeah. auto mass, we can set it on our own. So currently, it's one, or by default, it's one. We can set it at 1,000, whichever number we want. Linear drag, under angular drag, gravity scale. Basically, gravity scale is, you know, how much gravity is applied on our player if we set that to negative size add component negative rigid value, body it will draw the player up so it will move him up and not down because we know gravity pulls you down so i don't have a ground constraints if we oh so that's i got it that adds gravity as if it was a 2d side scroller so i don't actually need rigid body at all then because this is top down Ooh. So this is unneeded. We want to freeze the position for X and Y and freeze the rotation for the Z so that will not Thank allow you. our character to ah, rotate huge. and move and so on and so forth. And Adrian from this. before. Don't worry about that, but I want to show you one thing. If I Does a rigid body do collision though? Uh, we can look. I think Box Collider 2D is Collision, which is what I have over here. Right? Box Collider seems more like uh, what, what we need for it. Because this is all about mass, drag, scale. It does have Collision Detection. But you use box collider. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just gonna go with box collider because I don't. I don't think we need this. I hit the play button now. We will notice that there you go. You see <laughs> that our game object fell, and it's over here. So it's he's falling. still falling. Why is that? Well, because we applied a rigid body. Project name for now. Maybe it though. Pulls him down. It says your sub lone star. As I already said. Now, in order for us to land on something, we need to have a collider. And for that, I'm going to right click over here and create an empty game object, which I'm going to call, I don't know, ground collider. And even though it's an empty game object, we can still attach a collider on it. So we can select it and we can go here in the inspector and we can filter for collider and I'm going to select box collider 2D. So you can see Tree. the shape is a box. If I select it, it's a box. And over here, inside of the inspector, you have options. So we have the offset. You see, this is offsetting the box, even though it's not moving the game object from its own position. You have the size. So if I resize it, you will notice now the box collider game is object. bigger. One thing that I want to point out is that in the scene view, because we are laying out our game objects, we can see this box visually but in the game we don't see it you see in the game we don't see it if i hit the play button we will notice now that again our character fell down and now you're going to think that i'm crazy clients had a collision check to you don't need to have a rich body either you could do all the physics and animation on more form oh okay gotcha um Wait, why is this opening this and how did I open my atlas again, but in a way that I can then use it? Uh, yeah, I just want to like, I've got the atlas. Do I just need to add sprite renderer here? Sprite, select sprite, no. I want to pull it off. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's look. Player zero, it is the sprite renderer. 
but I was able to create player zero. How did I do that again? How did we do it, guys? I have my atlas. View an import activity window? No. I want to open this bad boy. So I can make some cuts on it. That'd be interesting, Scalibur. Sprite edit. Uh, sprite editor. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Oops. Okay, so let's go grab a tree. Sure. And we'll call this tree underscore zero. And perfect. Apply tree zero. Then we go to tree and tree zero. Okay. Perfect. All right, so I don't have any movement systems, I guess, yet in the game. And I haven't learned how to set that with the new movement input system. input system okay. no yes matter of it okay that's fine. We'll deal with that, I guess, later. Maybe be like, teacher, but you said it's that for our own game object as well. So no matter if it has a rigid body, if it doesn't have a, our character, this fluffy thing, yeah. we also need to select it and go over here, and we can filter for colliders, and we have something called a circle collider 2D, which circle is going collider. to, you see, be a circle or circle oh, okay. around. Now, which colliders you want to apply will depend on the shape of your game object. So if you have a cube or something that is similar to a cube, you're going to add a box collider. If you have a circular game object like this one over here, you're going to apply a circle collider. So over here, I'm it's also going to fogger. change the radius because we have a lot of options here that we are standing on each other. And here is our character. And if you look at here, he's standing on an invisible ground. If I select the ground collider over here, you will notice, and for some reason it is not showing up, here is the ground, where is the ground collider? <laughs> here it is. For some reason, it was it didn't show it right away. But anyways, you can see that he is standing right on the collider of this game object. And if I select the character as well, you will notice how their two colliders are over overlapping with each other. Of course, in the game, it will not look like this. You will probably have a ground, so it will similarly look something like this. So he will be standing on some type of ground. When I select the yes. character over here inside of the collider, you will notice mm -hmm. one thing. We have something over here called called is trigger and it's a checkbox what will happen if I check that checkbox well let's find out I'm going to hit the play button and now again you will see that my character fell through the ground collider even though it has a collider so what's going on teacher again you said don't cry don't panic I'm going to uncheck the is trigger basically <laughs> 
later on in the code we're going to see how we are going to detect these collisions between game objects because this is currently a ground but imagine it to be a collectible item a coin or a health item or whatever we need to know when these two touch each other inside uh, of our okay. game and in order to do that we're going to go or we are going to use code now one of the ways to know that is He's by checking good. this is trigger checkbox which is over here and later on in the code we are going to use something like on trigger enter it's a function that's called on trigger enter that allows us to detect which game objects have collided with with which game objects and a trigger collider is not a solid collider as you saw a moment ago it can pass through other colliders but still detect collision why am I showing you and telling you this? Well, because imagine you have a collectible item. You want it not to be a solid collider. You, you just want to, you know, collect it and there you go. You don't want to hit it and be bounced off it or something like that. So for that, we're going to use trigger colliders. But don't worry about that. We will Got see it. it with real world examples later on when it comes in the game. Next on the menu, we have the audio source. And I removed all the components that we used previously. And if you're wondering how you can remove a component, so for example, if I have a box collider over here, you How's this game? are simply going Great. to click here where are these three dots on the co on remove com add component. And I'm going to filter for audio source. And this is a component that will allow us to play music in our game, sound effects and all of the other stuff, of course. Now, as you can see over here, we have one thing which is audio clip and it says none because we didn't attach any. The audio clip is your MP3 file, WAV file, whatever <laughs> file that plays audio so. sounds and you attach it over here and then this audio source will play it. You have other options over here, of course, to mute. You have options to play on awake, which means as soon as we run the game, it will start playing. We have loop to loop it over and over again. You have over here the volume, the pitch, and so on and so forth. You can play with these, and these all are accessible VI code. And most of the time, we will play these VI code. Now, as an example, I have one sound effect over here, and I am going to select the character. And by the way, I have attached this audio source on the character, but you can attach it on whatever you want. You can attach it uh <laughs> is budget everything that's right um how do you know Go here. And it was really cute. Uh huh. And I accidentally pushed delete to the entire thing. What about control Z? And no, like I accidentally like no. What do you mean no? I accidentally pushed delete and closed it. So Why would you was, press delete and I then close you. it? I'm so mad. It was so cute. I'm so mad. It's really not a great idea. And then I, I just like went crazy, and my hands just did yeah. all this crazy. I mean, you do start freaking out, and that's true. So I'm very sad. Do you want to play Diablo in twenty minutes? Twenty minutes. Yes. Okay. Is that a twenty minutes is too short or too long? It's just coming up. But sure, that's fine. Sorry about your cow. I mean, you can you know, just go draw it again. It was perfect. Just go draw it again. You're doing great. Don't forget to hit save often. Okay. 
Um, and that's why Ooh. you save everybody. Diablo 5 development after being disappointed by D4 and D? Yeah. On your grandma, if you want that, okay? Just kidding. But anyways, you can attach it wherever you want to attach it. You will have probably a game object called BG Music, that sound is effect. Strange, dry your eyes. Or Don't whatever. Know that one. And you will attach the audio source components on them. And if I drag now this piano audio clip and I put it over here, if I run the game, but before that, let me just lower the volume a little bit. Let's run our game. Hey! 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 Get it, little llama! Ah! Uh. I am a mortal king, I am the king and sing, I bring the music team back! Hear my empirical rhymes added lyrical- Nice. It's good. So that we don't, you know, go deaf. Mm hmm Here we go. So this is playing audio in our game, and this is also if the game is run on a device, heart, mobile, desktop, thought, no matter what, sword. or which device, it will be played the same way. Of course, as I said, this can be controlled via code, where we write code, audio source dot play, stop, and so on and so forth, and it will play and stop this audio sound as well. So I'm going to remove this component and before we, you know, go into the nuts and bits of coding and all of the good stuff, I want to show you another common component that is used all the time, which is UI elements. And if I right click over here, you will go under UI, UI and then over here you have the UI elements. $99,999 in the jar, $99,999. Sell one more in the door, $100,000 no. in no. the jar. One hundred thousand dollars in the jar. One hundred thousand dollars. Sell one more through the door. One hundred thousand dollars and eighty cents in the jar. Wait, eighty cents? No more. No more. The image. So let's start with the image. I'm going to click here. Now, one thing you will notice is you see these this big thing now over here. This big rectangle, whatever it's Ooh, called. That's the big canvas. old rectangle. And the canvas has its own options. You can see over here when I clicked on the image it automatically created a canvas because every UI element needs to be a child of a canvas and it also created an event system which is responsible for huh. detecting input on UI elements. Oh. Now the canvas has a few options over here. For this is where the input system is. Okay. You're using the standalone input module which uses the old input manager. What? You are using the new input system and have the old input manager disabled. Standalone input module will not work. Click the button below to replace this component with a input system, new input module, which is the new one. Okay. Because we will talk about that later on. For simplicity, I'm going to select the canvas and change this screen space overlay to screen space camera. And I'm going to attach the main camera over here just so that we can, you know, make it a little bit you know smaller because it's easier to interact with a smaller canvas just because of the visual hold up what the main camera over here oh i have to drag the camera onto it okay just so that we can you know make it a little bit you know smaller because it's easier to interact with a smaller canvas just because of the visuals anyways this is our image and you will notice it if I select the image and I can move it left and right if I can select first I can move it left and right up and down and you will notice it wherever I where move did my it, canvas go though why is it so tiny of, the game. of course we can select the image and over here we can attach a sprite so let's go over here inside of I in, on inside of our I do have to, uh, pretty much Bartek, yeah. I do have to figure out where the heck my canvas went. Is that it? The little white box? Why is it so tiny all of a sudden? A 
thousand by a thousand. There we go. It's a thousand percent more value right there. Our sprites. And over here, I'm going to drag, I don't know, let's say character one, the same one we have over here. And I can click this set native size, which will set the native size width and height, which you can see over here. Width is 150, height is 119. And you will notice it. This right here is our UI element on the left side and on the right side is our game character. And of course, this is our own character. You can use it, for example, we can position him over here at the top left corner and he will be used to represent health status or whatever. Oh. Same way, this can be a coin representing how many coins we picked up and so on and so forth, you get the point. We can also create a button. I can right click over here and we can go under UI and we can create a button and voila, there is our button. Our button can be also resized, so we can do something like this. We can resize it. We can select. Button can be also okay. resized. I already made the button. button okay. And voila, there is our button. Our button can be also resized, so we can do something like this. We can resize it. We can select the text which is inside of the button. We can say, for example, play game or something like that. And I can, you know, resize it over here. There you go. If I hit the play button, we can press the button. If Wait, I hit the play button. Son of a gun. If I, I click this. over here and we can go under UI and we can create a Wait, oh this is a text mesh pro. I I just want a regular button. UI. Where's button at? Do they not have button anymore? The game's half done at this point. That was kind of my thought. It's a PC RPG that may just have a, a mobile port because under UI I see image, text, raw image, panel, toggle, slider, scroll bar, scroll view, button, text mesh pro, drop down, text mesh pro, input field. Oh, under legacy there's button. But that's legacy. Does that mean I should just use the button text mesh pro? Okay. Interactable transition uh, target graphic. Normal color is Red highlighted color is blue. Pressed color is green. Let's just do that for trying out. Where do I put the text on it though? Like what it says. This appears to refer to new access text much pro, such when you need to add resources to your project that are essential for using it. Oh, okay. I have to add resources. Now, I still don't have a place to just type for what's in the button like he does. Button and voila, there is our button. Oh, maybe our I do. Our button can be also resized, so we can do something like this. We can resize it. We can select the text which is in Oh, it's under the button. Um play. Uh-huh. Where's Vertex color. Okay. What is this? This object. This like big globe. Worldwide. Yeah, what's that thing? Can't move it either. Oh, 
Oh, it's the global light. What is this? Event system? This is the button text, which is for some reason behind the button. Wait, I have two buttons. Okay, delete this one button. Okay, I do want to resize this though. Do I need to just go over, over here and do it? Okay. Uh, Cool. That did it. Inside of the button, we can say, for example, play game or something like that. And I can, you know, resize Kinda, it yeah. over here. There you go. If I hit the play button, we can press the button. If I hit the play button, we can press. And you will notice it is blinking, which is indicating that we are pressing it. And I'm currently pressing it. And I'm pressing it with the mouse button, but same way you can press it with your finger on mobile devices and it will work the same. Of course, later on, we will see how we can execute functions and code when we press a button. Now, another UI element, and that's it, that is going to be the last one that I'm going to introduce over here, is a text. Now, we have a text and we have Text Mesh Pro. We will talk about both, but currently I'm just going to show you the text one, which is a simple text. You can, you know, move it left and right. We can resize it like this. There you go. We can, over here, inside of the inspector, we can type whatever we want, whatever I want, and I can, you know, change the color, the font over here, you see, we have some fonts. Actually, we don't for some reason. Yeah, we have only the default Arial one, but we can import our own fonts, whichever font you find online, of course, that is permitted to be used Material commercially preset. or if you buy it. And over here, you can set it to be normal, bold, italic. You know, if you use any text editor, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know what this is. And, since you're on a computer, you probably used one. Over here, you can change the color of the text. So for example, we have it to red one and you see whatever I want. And this is how we are going to represent text in our game. For example, how many lives we have, how many coins we picked up, what is the current score, so on and so forth. So these are the three most common used UI elements. Of course, we have many others. So over here in the UI, you see we have raw image, button, toggle, slider, drop down, input field, and all of the good stuff. But I wanted to cover the most used components in these two or three videos, which are rigid bodies, sprite components, or sprite renders, audio sources, and these UI elements. So these are the most used ones. All right, I need to move around. You cannot create, interact with each and all of two is but before that when you download unity you also downloaded visual studio with it so just make sure over here under unity and preferences this is for mac for windows it's edit and preferences are somewhere over here but you are going to go under preferences and let me just open this window nicely so there you go here you have external tools here it is visual studio for mac so there you go and if you what? do not see it by any means over here you can click on browse and you can locate your oh. app and just you know select it for example i can go in applications and from here you know okay. i can 
find Visual Studio or whatever. So here it is and click on it and there you go. <laughs> so do the same thing for Shut Windows. Up, Just make sure that external scripting or script editor is your Visual Studio. You can also use Visual, Visual Studio code, but that is your own preference. So going back over here inside of my scripts folder, I already created a player movement. No, he's on normal speed. I tried to speed him up and I could not do it. He's got a player movement script. Son of a gun script and before you start judging me and telling me I'm crazy which is something we already know just right click over here and go on create and click on C sharp script and when you click on that just give it a name so script name there you go and then simply double click it and it will open in Visual Studio I am going to delete this because I have the player movement and I have created it in the exact same way I just showed you. So I am going to double click it and it is going to open over here. So what do we have here? Now don't worry if you don't understand all of these things that but and I'm going to say that is equal to five by default. Why? Well, because we are going to go inside of Unity and I am going to select the character. Remember, I told you that here, when you select an in the inspector, you see all of the components attached on that game object. While mm -hmm. our script is also a component, so I can attach it over here. And there we go, we have it. And we also see this speed variable, which has a value five, which is the one that I created a moment ago, this over here. Huh. So what do I want to do inside of this script? I'm simply going to move the character and we are going to move it by using a float which I'm going to say h is equal to input so in put if I can you know why are these not private calls <laughs> type it correctly get axis horizontal there you go and I'm also going to say float v is equal to input dot get axis vertical. What is this? Again, do not worry. It's not important that you understand everything right away what it is. But basically with input, we get the input from the user. Get axis and passing horizontal, that means we will get input for the... Character in tune? I don't know. Character, right? They are protected. Oh, by default. Got it. A key. So I'm going to go over here for the A key, and I'm going to put them in a comment. A key, D key, left arrow, and right arrow. That is the horizontal input, basically moving left and right. And the V key is exactly that, up and down. Vertical is up and down, W and S key. So now what we can do is we can get the position of our character we can say vector 3 or vector 2 position which is so i can say pos is equal to transform that position transform that position is basically and again it's not important that you understand it right away but i'm just telling you how things are connected so if i go back and internal over here, as well notice yeah. that we have our transform which is our default we know that it's our default component attached on our game object on every game object that is so it has a property position rotation and scale and we're using the position which is going to tell us the position of our character inside of the game so next what i'm going to say i'm going to say pos.x so the x axis of the position plus equals h multiplied with time dot delta time and our position dot y plus equals V multiplied with time dot delta time and then what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to say transform that position seems way worse than and before here it's not pox it's pos so what is happening over here I'm getting the input should we go left or right up or down and I'm multiplying that value with time dot delta time which is basically a value or a time frame, you see over here, the completion time in seconds since the last frame. Basically time- Yeah, but it's still, I like typing frame. it out. I feel and like I learned better. Here, the update function is called once per frame, which means if we have 60 frames in a second, it will be called 60 times. So we are using this to smooth 
things out to smooth out the movement and we will see of course this later on in our game do not worry about that i'm just showing you basic things how work how it works so you don't get scared because people are usually scared because of the coding and all of the good stuff and how scary it is so if i hit the play button now we will be able to move our character <laughs> Okay, player. Uh, invalid token float. Oh, Pweeblick. It's not how you spell. Okay, the name move delta does not exist. Do I have move delta? Oh, no. I got rid of that. And compile. All right, let's see how it goes. Play. No. You're trying to use the Unity class, we switch the input active handling. Am I though? All right, let me finish this final piece. Really things. Then I'm Gucci. All right, let's take a look at his script and see. Instruction project, project assets. Where did that go? Why won't it take me there? Downloads as a zip. I don't see it. Maybe it's just a big zip file. Oh, there we go. Okay, extract. Because I'm calling Unity Engine at the top, that probably it probably doesn't like that. It's a terribly slow extraction. That's what I'm saying is there twenty thousand assets in this? Just show us the whole script, mate. No, using Unity Engine. Is he using the old input manager? Son of a gun. Why does everybody keep saying use the new one then? This video is only like a year old, I thought. Eventually adds more to it. 
Oh, that's not player movement. Here's his player movement. He was running Unity 2020. Yeah, but that's not, that's all fine. Okay, so I still need then. Something for how to call the new. You have switched active input handling to input system package in player settings. Um, uh, yeah. Input handling. <laughs> Place uh, so I could use both, but I just want to I just want to understand the new input system and how I'm supposed to write on it because everything is. Uh, Unity input system, new input system. Following code is the old way of doing things. Double click my control and settings. Creating an input action asset. Oh, so it's not for scripting. You're literally creating an, a movement asset. Where am I going to find that? Thanks, Warren. Check settings, input, create settings asset. That might be a good element.
Okay. And where is it going to put that element? Uh, multiple input device community type to do coming. Yeah. Edit project settings player. Oh, you're just saying have it be both. to learn more about that new system. Are you ready, Moo? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> I really how to do okay, I'll come over in a second and help you. Okay, so now we Ooh. press play. And everything works and we can move around. Nice. And we can hover over our play button. And we can press it, and, oh, that guy can run into the tree. I thought there was a collision on that. Um, this has a box collider on it. Edit collider. So that just goes right through that. Mm, you need a rigid body 2D on the player. I've got a box collider on the player. But you're saying player needs to have rigid body? Why wouldn't a box collider work on them? That other dude was teaching me to put a rigid body. But okay, we'll add a player add UI no component. <laughs> rigid body 2D gravity 0 perfect. And player Okay. Bam. What? It turned my my image. <laughs> okay. Where's the rotation? It's a feature, not a bug. Is body type static? Is that what I'm looking for? Well, I want to see this first. No. Okay, so that's, I don't know what continuous versus discrete is for there. Um, where do I freeze rot rotation? Freeze position, Y, X. Oh, freeze rotation. Uh, 
Oui. Nice. Play. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is I want to set the main camera on the player. This is the wrong way to do movement, by the way. That's why you get jittering. Son of a gun. So I'm guessing I have to just put it under player. Wait, oh no, now I'm moving the camera. That doesn't seem good. <laughs> Well, what's the right way to do the movement so it doesn't jitter on collision? Canvas. Canvas has image, button, all of that stuff. Which honestly should be a part of the camera, I think. Yeah, because that's going to be the UI. You're setting coordinates generally, you would want to use physics based movement. All right, camera. Align view to selected. No, that's not going to be it. How do I get the camera to follow my character? All right, let's just try making a script. But I mean, there has to just already be a thing, right? What's the most basic? I attached it to the player, but the problem was then the player, I wasn't moving the player, I was moving the camera around. Oh wait, no, this actually is right. Because the tree should stay in the same spot and then the canvas is coming with me. Perfect. All right. That is good. Very nice. We did it. All right. One second. I'm going to help uh, Moo Girl. I think I did it. Did you? Yeah. What? Wow. Good job. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll figure out the jitter piece later. Um, nice element. But hey, Llama RPG 
is looking pretty good, everybody. Look at that. Look at that. You are a sexy. It looks like you're the treat. No, you're the you're the bucket of water. Honestly, this button should probably not be a part of the canvas right now, but we were just learning about what buttons are. Gorgeous. How do I still make the button show up though? Like I don't see the button at all. Oh, it has to be attached to a canvas. Got it. But I still don't see the button now. Where's my button at? My button is now on a canvas, but it no longer is showing. Is it just like crazy far away or something? Minus five million or something like that? Oh, there it is. Cool. And then So then we press play, and then the button disappears. I guess the play text also needs that same thing. Deal with later. Okay. Gorgeous. We did good. What is this? Oh. Moo Girl is calling us. So it is time to move over to some Diablo 2. Um, teach your partner D2 feet move girl. Thank you to everybody for the help today. That was a good start. Get commit on uh Llama RPG. I think it's almost ready. I think we're ready for early access if you guys want to add it to your wish list. I think it's almost there. <laughs> 